Valentine's Day I had with my current, my wife. I was going to say current wife. Sounds weird. So, so I was, I was many moons ago, a youth director, kind of like Jack, only with hair. And uh, I know, I know. I had to get him for, for one thing. Um, but I was a youth director, and I had a lot of volunteers in my youth ministry who were college students at Azusa Pacific University, where I had just graduated from. And uh, I started seeing this girl named Wendy, who I eventually married. And uh, we, we had this, this awkward thing in that after we dated a couple times, I asked her this weird question at the Del Taco across the street from Azusa Pacific. And I said, so, uh, when if, if someone asks you if, like, I'm your boyfriend, you, what do you say? Like, I was trying to get to this question of, like, are we, like, a thing? Are you my girlfriend? Am I your boyfriend? I mean, this is really it's one of those awkward conversations at Del Taco. Luckily, there were tacos to fill the uh, anxiety, and she said, yeah, I do. And, and I said, well, I, I say the same. I just wanted to make sure. Now, another question comes up. When did we start dating? Like, how long? Like, do we have an anniversary? Do we, like, how do we explain this? And we determined that we started dating officially January 28th. January 28th. Um, gentlemen, just a tip. Um, have that discussion on February 15th rather than January 28th. But what's, uh, what's today? Valentine's Day? Yeah. It's awkward. So I, or whatever today is. Today's Valentine's Day. What's today? 17th? I don't even know. It's the 14th. It is the 14th, yeah. See, I don't even know. I don't even know. I didn't know back then. You can see where this is going. I had a prayer meeting at 6 a.m. at Azusa Pacific uh, on Thursdays just because my a lot of my team were students there, and that's the time we could get together to pray about youth ministry, and it was right before the cafeteria opened for breakfast. And so um, I, I arrive, and, and people are gathering, and then here comes Wendy, my... <coughs> my girlfriend on February 14th with this pan of caramel rolls and she comes in and she hands them to me and she gives me a card and I go, Oh, thank you. And I go, Hey, uh, Hey everyone, when he brought caramel rolls and I say, yeah, go ahead. And people started taking the caramel rolls and eating them. And, and when he goes, don't you want a caramel roll? And I go, I go, no, no thanks. I don't. I don't really like caramel rolls, and and they have nuts. And um, and she goes, oh okay. And so we we have our prayer meeting, and I and I go, and, and my girlfriend is not really seems happy with me. I <clears throat> I open up the card, and and I I had a card for her because I guess it was and my card said something like I've never really thought of things of Valentine's Day as a big deal, and you know, that, et cetera, et cetera, and, you know, but I, I still like you or something like that. And, and her card was a little more serious than that. And then I realized that she stayed up really late at night to make these caramel rolls for me for Valentine's Day, and I didn't even recognize it at all. It is a miracle that we're still married. It's really... Abby, your existence is a mystery. I... I uh, so the point, the point I want to get on this is, is this, is if, because I wasn't paying attention, I didn't realize the gift, and I didn't realize what the gift meant. And it's very easy as we get to this passage to, to kind of miss uh, what's happening here. Uh, last week, you guys talked about, the, you know, there's this famine happening out in, in uh, Jerusalem, out in, in Israel. The church uh, is, uh, people are suffering there. And Paul has been working on a collection from the churches, uh, you know, to send, send out there. Now, let's get to 2 Corinthians 8, 16 through 24. Starting with 16. 
But thanks be to God who put it into the heart of Titus, the same earnest care I have for you. For he not only accepted our appeal, but being himself very earnest, is going to you on his own accord. With him, we are sending the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching of the gospel. And not only that, but he has been appointed by the churches to travel with us as we carry out this act of grace that is being ministered by us for the glory of the Lord himself and to show our goodwill. We take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift that is being administered by us, for we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. And with them, we are sending our brother, whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. As for Titus, he is my partner and my fellow worker for your benefit. And as our, for our brothers, they are messengers of the church, the glory of Christ. So give proof before the churches of your love and, and of our boasting about you to these men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so if, if, if we were just to read it, and I've done this before, you kind of read it and you go, okay, so... It's kind of just telling a story. Uh, Paul is going to send Titus and some other people that he doesn't even name their names uh, to Corinth from Macedonia uh, to collect an offering so it can get back to Jerusalem. Okay, let's read the next section, right? But if I do that, I'm kind of missing what is really happening, what gift this is to the church, right? This, that, the, the gift that Paul and the people in, with him are giving to the church in Corinth. All right? So let's let's talk about it for just a second. First, if uh, probably Jack has talked about this, the church the Co Corinth is a very rich area. It's like this huge port city in Greece and it is uh, there's lots of wealth in there. Macedonia, where Paul is, there's been persecution of the church and they don't have much money. And yet they have been sacrificially giving for the famine, right? Paul needs all the help he can get. But instead of keeping all the help he can get, he's going to send his right-hand guy, Titus, to him. So this is, this is a, a generous act of Paul. Like, I'm not going to send just some scrub to go collect your offering, right? I'm not going to just... You know, send the B team. I'm going to send the A team. I'm going to start off with Titus. My right hand, he says this, my partner and fellow worker for your benefit. I'm going to give him to you to go collect. So there you go. But wait, there's more. Not only am I going to give you Titus, I'm going to give you this unnamed guy, the brother who is famous among all the churches for his preaching the gospel. In other words, do you remember some of the complaints that they had about Paul? They thought Paul wasn't all that great of a speaker. There were more people that were more eloquent than him when he came. That's why his authority was challenged in Corinth. That was probably from way back at the beginning. You guys might have talked about that. But here's Paul going, <clears throat> all right, not only am I going to see you, my right-hand man, I'm going to send you the best preacher we got up here to go down. So when you guys have your have church, you guys are having your meetings in your homes. You guys have not only Titus to preach, you have this guy who is probably the most famous of all of us in preaching the gospel. But wait, Reagan, there's more. So it's Titus's right hand man, this famous preacher who has been wait who has been not only as famous for his preaching, he's been appointed by all the churches as one worthy to receive the gifts, like he's trusted to, to take on the money. But he's also sending with him our brother whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters. In other words, another really earnest guy who loves the Lord Jesus and is, a, is a, instrumental to Paul's ministry. I'm going to send him also. 
So it's not just Titus. It's the best preacher and this most earnest person. Okay? Why, why would Paul be so generous in sending this A-team down to Corinth to correct an offering? Reagan, you have a question uh, or a comment, a snide remark? Well, I do have a question. Um, would, would one, do you think one of them could have been Timothy or... Probably not Timothy, but it could have been uh, it could have been Mark. It could have been Luke. That's some people think it might have been Luke. We're not sure. Here's what is probably the case. Ready? Well, wait. Now I'm skipping ahead. All right, I'm going to skip ahead and I'll come back. So there, there's the question of why, why are these people anonymous? Why doesn't he name them? Okay. Most likely, most likely these are. People, if their name was out there, and um, and they got found out that they were helping Paul in his ministry as they're going from Macedonia down to um, Corinth, there's a good shot that they would probably get suffer greatly at the, their hands. So most scholars, or many scholars, believe that these were probably former synagogue leaders or people who were very invested amongst the, the Jewish people, that um, they are not happy with Paul. And if they found out that their names, they, you know, just suppose the, the letter gets intercepted, they see these names, boom, they're going to get, they're going to get tortured or something, right? Life would not go well for them if they got caught. So now think of this really quick, kind of back to it. Not only is Paul sending the A-team to them, he's sending people who are willing to sacrifice greatly for the task and privilege of going down to Corinth to be with them. Because they're going to preach to them, they're going to minister to them, and they're going to take this offering to, to, to Jerusalem. And now to reveal one other layer. okay? Like remember, my, Wendy gave me caramel rolls. I didn't recognize how great of a gift it was. After I realized that was for me, I felt like an idiot. I, felt, I, I was very apologetic, and I have been for 30-some years now. Uh, very apologetic. Um, it, <clears throat> what I didn't know was the sacrifice she made in staying up late at night as a college student and with work. All that went into her making this for me, and I just didn't even recognize it. So here are these men that are coming down. And at least two of them, if they were known or found out, probably would have risked a lot in terms of their of suffering for them. This is, this is a generous, generous gift. And the question is, why would they do this? Why would they do this? Why would Paul and his people be so generous to the Corinthians? Anyone but Reagan. Unless no one ever. Or right, I'll start calling on names. <coughs> James Rentmeister. I knew it. It's just like at school. No, I'm just kidding. I, I'll, I'll just answer. I'll just answer. Okay. So so here's here's the thing. Paul had just talked to the Corinthian, Corinthians about their need to give to show what God has done in their lives, right? That, that it's, I think, how did Jack put it last week, from, from the heart to the hands, right? There's, there's this, there's, a, there's something that takes place when you put your faith in Jesus Christ that affects you so that the outcome of it, there's this fruit to it, and part of that is generosity, that you become generous with your things. And Paul's asking the church in Corinth to do that. So what Paul's doing is demonstrating to the Corinthian church is this is this is normal for us as the church. We've had our problems in the past, Corinthians, but I'm not just going to give you some schlub. I'm not going to give you James Rentmeester to go down there. I'm going <laughs> to. I'm going <laughs> to. Just kidding. I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you the A team. We're going to sacrifice for your sake. 
And these men are going to sacrifice a lot because if they get found out, it's going to, they're going to suffer for it. And so they, that's why they're bringing it. That's why they're doing it as an example to the, to the uh, Corinthian church. And he says, Reagan, you, know, you have a question? Yes, but what you're saying is Paul is sending the um, best team down there to, like, because they need it? That no, is? I don't think that, that's a good question. I don't think that they needed it, per se. I think that it was, it went above and beyond what was really necessary. And it's for the sake of the Corinthian church, and it demonstrates to them the kind of generosity. Yes, good. <laughs> Reagan's going to finish out. <laughs> what? No. All right. La lastly, lastly here. There's this one part in here. He, he talks about, he's sending this one guy who's well known. Um, he's been approved by the church. He's doing this. And he says, <clears throat> he says, we're taking this course, right? Um, we're doing this because it's, a, it's, a, it's something that they're supposed to minister. Paul and his group is the ones that are administering this activity of raising funds to give to the church in Jerusalem. And, and they're picking this one guy, and he says, we take this course so that no one should blame us about this generous gift in being administered by us. A better way of translating it uh, from the Greek would probably be, so, so no, the, no one would, um, no one would uh, accuse us in the administration of this. Um, that we're doing it all the up and up, and we're doing it above and beyond. For we aim at what is honorable, not only in the Lord's sight, but also in the sight of man. In other words, I'm not going to bring the James Rentmeesters down to collect all this money. I'm going to pick on you the rest of the night now. Um, I'm not going to bring them down there just to, to pick it up. No one knows them, and, and, you know, if something goes wrong, then we're all going to get blamed, and it's going to be bad. Even if it's for the glory of God, if, if, if it doesn't seem right to other people, you know, it could cause problems. So they're going to try to do everything that they can in their generosity to do it, to aim towards everything that is honorable. That makes sense, right? makes sense. How many of you guys have done things generously but not aiming at honor? Anyone? I have. Ava? You raised your hand. I mean, that's... All right, never mind. The, the, I'll, I'll, give it, I'll give you an example. Um... I've done some things where I've given of my time or of my expertise or of my money or things like that um, because it was it was a good thing to do, but I was also hoping that I'd get noticed by it. That makes sense. I I was tr I'm trying to do this so that people would think I'm generous, like I was concerned with what other people were thinking about me, rather than aiming for honor. I was aiming for looking honorable. This, and, th and this can sometimes be a struggle. Here's where it gets really bad, is when the church of Jesus Christ does things to look good, but then they get found out that things aren't so good. Because what happens then? What happens when it seems that the church is acting hypocritical? To go well for the church? Luckily, that never happens in our day. Well, here. Well, hopefully not. We pray that it doesn't, but I'll tell you what, Reagan. Here we go. Ready, everyone? Ready? We're all sinners. The youth are sinners. The adults are sinners. The leaders are sinners. The elders are sinners. We're all sinners. And here you go. Ready? Sin might happen. And we might let you down. Even elders, even leaders. Here's the hope. 
Here's the prayer. That even in that, and we deal with sin, that we aim for honor and not just good PR. Do, do you know what I mean by that? That we aim for honor and not just trying to cover ourselves. Like, oh, this horrible thing happened. We're going to pretend it wasn't so horrible. Or blame someone else. We want to aim for honor. Which means we confess what we've done and in confidence that God who is just and merciful will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. So the hope is, Reagan, that we don't do things dishonorably or that we don't sin, that everything's up on in the up on the up, but because we're all sinners, it'll probably happen sometime. And sometime when the world changes. What's that? Sometime when the world changes. Oh, I'm saying anytime. Like we're like it's just we're sinners. So what we have to do is is say, okay, everyone, we're Christians, we're gonna be honorable. And when things go dishonorably, what we need to do is not try to cover ourselves, but we need to be honest and open and aim for honorable things, which means confess and repent. All right, I went way long. It's Reagan's fault. It and, so I'm just kidding. Uh, so uh, I'll pray. And then uh, you, you want me to tell, say the questions or do you guys have questions? Yeah. All right, you guys have the questions. All right, let's pray. Father, we do thank you and praise you for your love for us. We thank you for giving us your word. We thank you that this word talks to us about what happened many years ago for our benefit. We thank you that Paul and his companions sought to aim for honor. They were so generous with their time, with their people, with their resources for the sake of the, your kingdom. For the Corinthians' sake, that they'd have an example. For the church in Jerusalem's sake, so that they can have money for food. And Lord, we're just thankful, Lord, um, how you made it all work. Father, it's amazing as we look at it and know that there was such a, a, a history between Paul and the Corinthian church that was so tense. And yet, Lord, uh, we see the love and care that he has for that church and for how the church in Corinth um, really stepped up to the occasion. We thank you for it all. For your sake and for ours, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.